Uncensored. It's time, ladies and gentlemen. Here is the podcast that is all about intellectually immature nonsense. Are a very particular set of skills. <laughs> and by God, this is the BS. Uncensored. All right, there it is, episode four of the BS Uncensored. Thanks for listening. Uh, my name is Jason Bailey. There is Nikki D. And that's me. And there is Oh Nelson. Baby Man says hello. Baby Man says hello on the podcast. Surprised we were able to even get this thing up and running. Are you a little chill wills over there? Yeah, it's freezing in here. It's always freezing in here. You guys are so hot natured. That's right. Holy. Oh, Calling all my, the hot boys. Yeah. It's our boy Christ. band name. The hot boys. With a Z. Yes, with a That's Z. That's actually how they spell it, yeah. <laughs> Two T's and a Z. <laughs> and the H is like a flame. Yes. A flame emoji. <laughs> the hot boys. <gasps> hot boys. You know what happens when you get chilly all the time? What? Your blood's getting thin because you're getting older. No, it's cold in here, and that's why I'm chilly. If I go outside where it's warm, I feel fine. It's not cold in here. It's actually perfect temperature, but you are getting older. I was going to say that. You but wouldn't I- know that. You wear hoodies and long sleeves every single day, so it's not cold to you. I'm wearing shorts today. Though. When I wore a hoodie yesterday, I wasn't cold either. Yeah. Well, I, this is what I was going to say to you. And I think I can say this to you because we're friends, hmm. is that you look like you're getting older. <laughs> Crazy! No, and, I'm uh, aging very much so backwards. Thank right. you very much. No, no, no. And let me tell you how what I mean by that. What do you mean? Is that even your wigs are turning gray? Oh, <laughs> wow. Nope, wrong. Wow. That's even though cold. I am going to wear a gray one very soon. But why? Because it's a very cute color, and I want to try it. It's a trendy color. It is. Like women are dyeing their hair gray or white or whatever, uh, and like living that way. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. Super, super platinum, yeah. a.k.a. gray. Is that, that's, what, that's, what, that's what I call my grays, platinum. No, they're just gray. Or silver. No, wow. mine, mine are wise hairs. You have a lot of them. You have a lot of wisdom I over do. there. I do. Mm-hmm. I've grown the beard out. And I've been sitting here looking at all the wisdom you possess over there. My pores are shooting wisdom. They are. Look at that. Everywhere. <laughs> How do you like the beard? You like the beard? It looks good on you. Yeah, and the, 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 yeah. the hair thing going? Uh-huh. Me. You, I, when you're going to go that Her. little a hair, I think you have to have the beard. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was told that. Uh, well, you got to trim it up. I'm I'm working on that. Okay. I'm trying to find my guards. Uh-huh. <laughs> Oh my God. It's funny you say that because just, <laughs> no, really, serious, true story. So last night I, I was like, Rach, where's that bag that goes under the sink? Yep. And she goes, what bag? I said, it's got all my guards in it. Every guy has that bag. Right, and, it, and it's got a collection mm-hmm. from different. Yeah, it's like six different wall razors or whatever. It's never all from one. Because like I have different razors for different things. Like I've, <laughs> the peanut, which is awesome. I've got the peanut for, you know, shaving my body. Uh-huh. And I used to shave my face with it, so I have a little scruffle. Okay. And then I got the wall, which doesn't work as good as the peanut, Mm-mm. but it won't snag my boys. Yeah, that'll pinch the balls real quick. Right. The teeth will cut. So there is only one razor that I've ever... You know what? I've always been embarrassed to ask another man how he shaves his genitals, because I don't think at 48 I do it properly. No, I don't either. You too? Mm-mm. I always get it. I know I'm going to get caught, because I only have the the... The back and forth teeth. I don't have like a manscaper. Why don't you just near it? What are you doing? I heard it burns. It no, doesn't I, burn. You'll be fine. I've neared it before. Does it burn? Does it, did it burn you? No, it was fine. But it's yeah. it's, a, it's a process. You don't always get all the hairs. Oh, if you just hair. slather it on there, wait your few minutes, it'll all come off. You probably are trying to be generous and put like thin layers. Just slap it on. It'll come off. Let me ask you something. What? Thank you. You and Nelson, we're all very tight, but you and Nelson are really tight. Mm-hmm. He's got what some, like the doctors would call a weight problem, mm-hmm. right? So he so it can't reach, and yep. he's got nobody here to reach. If he, for medical reasons, mm-hmm. came to you and says, Nikki D., my closest and dearest friend here in Sacramento, <laughs> I would really like to take your advice and near my genitals, yep. but I can't reach them. Would you help me? This is not sexual, and if I get an erection, I'm sorry, but would you please nair my genitals? What would you say? Just because I'm extremely nosy, I would do it. I believe that. I would. Because you wanted to show me your <laughs> vagina one time. I, 
Because when you have problems like what I have, I always mm. want people's mm. opinions <laughs> who are like into health because I feel like there's something I'm missing health wise to like cure me of these lumps. That's the only reason why I was showing. Hey Bailey, you want to come in my room and look at my? I got these dangling balls growing on my <laughs> vagina. <laughs> That's not what you I want to check. You know the fastest way to become <laughs> uninterested in a vagina? <laughs> yeah. Go look at somebody's dangling ball growths. <laughs> Your vagina balls. <laughs> No, Nikki, I'm good. I'd like to keep a, a slight barrier in our friendship. <laughs> You'd be lucky to see mine. They're great balls. Yeah, I, I, I think I that. I think everybody thinks that way about themselves. Oh, no, these are great balls. A fire. You'll do what? Huh? Nothing. So have you seen the dude permer? Pruner? No. no. Yeah. Talk to me. I <laughs> Talk to me, Goose. Talk to me. Tell me. Put me on. I see the ad on my social media all the time. It's called the, the dude pruner mm-hmm. or the pruner. One of the two. There's a couple out there. But it's at home laser, like laser treatment. I don't know if I'm ready to do at home laser. So you just, you just, you, you know, you get, get them short, mm-hmm. and then you go through and you zap them. Well, God, if I got them short, then the problem's already solved. At that point, it's the getting them short without cutting my bag open. Yeah, but you want it smooth, right? Yeah, like, yeah that smooth. would be perfect. You want like the porn star smooth. Yeah. Oh, just go to the salon and get waxed in. I can That's wax another myself, good but I can't reach all of it. I couldn't. I, well, one, I'd feel really uncomfortable because I'm not well endowed. Mm-hmm. It's so we're not a grower. I don't want to go to. Plus, it's another woman that's going to be doing this, and I would feel dirty. Yeah, it's you can be a choose woman a man. Do. No, you can choose a man. Then I'd feel dirtier. They have options. You yeah. won't feel embarrassed. There's a couple things that make you as a man feel a little bit less of a man mm-hmm. and dirty. One, if you're a heterosexual guy and you go to the ball waxing salon <laughs> and say, no thanks, she's not good enough, nope. I want that dude. And you know he's got a hog on him too. That's a problem. And the other is, I just was at the dentist the other day, and you go to the dentist and you have this man staring you in the eyes and he says, I need you to open wider. Ooh, oh, yeah. open that up. That makes you feel dirty. <laughs> and so my, my mouth doesn't open very big, right? So he so he kept saying, "Is that as is that as is that as wide you can go?" Is that as wide? I'm like, "Dude, stop! This He's is like, really." I know you can do better than that. Open yeah. that mouth up. Let's see what that mouth do. Right, it felt like, like really uncomfortable. <laughs> it's like, "Fuck you, dude! Keep your mouth sh- keep your mouth shut. Just do your dentist shit and leave mine alone." <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, so I wanted to uh, use this episode to discuss 9-11 this week as we um, commemorated the 22nd anniversary of uh, of 9-11. And, you know, we've talked briefly about this on the radio show, but I, I haven't really had an opportunity to, to do this in, in long form, I guess you could say. And that is because uh, there's a t- couple different variables here is that for most of us, I think, uh, you know, for those that listen to this podcast, uh, I think I know my audience pretty well, is that we lived that day. Yes. You know, we we lived that day, and it is one of those days, this is very cliche to say, especially from the radio guy, but you know, it's one of those days we always remember where we were at, what we were doing, kind of like if you were old enough when the Challenger exploded. Mm-hmm. Remember where you were, what you were doing. You know, uh, when our parents tell the story of when JFK was assassin- yep. assassinated, the first moon landing. These are milestones in history. Whether good, bad, or indifferent, those are things that you will always remember. Mm -hmm. For our generation, 9-11 is the pinnacle, unfortunately. And so uh, as we get older and as time goes by, we start to see, in my opinion, the watered-down commemoration of of 9-11. We do. And I was, as much as I don't... You know, so from the old radio show, Steve and I used to talk about this, and he would always say that he actually en- enjoyed watching the week's programming of 9-11. Mm-hmm. He didn't enjoy it because of the horror and the bad things. Right. He enjoyed it because he and I um, shared being, you know, history buffs. Right. Like, we liked history, and, and we liked to learn about that mm-hmm. stuff. And I, I said I just couldn't do it. I couldn't watch it. I understood where he was coming from, but I couldn't do it. It just was not my thing. I watched some yesterday. And I noticed, though, that it was only on the History Channel and Discovery Channel. That's Th- it. That was my point, is this year, mm-hmm. there was a lot less programming. Yep, mm-hmm. absolutely. You know, Now, I don't have cable anymore, and so you know, you kind of go and see what the streaming services offer, but I didn't see any 
advertisements or trailers for. Nope. Usually they'll pop up. On YouTube videos and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I didn't see any of that. Yeah, I only saw it, and I, and I have cable. I only saw it on History and Discovery Channel. And I did watch a little bit because there's still some things that every year when those programs come on that I learn or I see or I know that I hadn't seen or heard prior. Same thing to yesterday. I, I saw a story on that prior I hadn't heard, you know, these people accounts of them telling what happened and things like that. So, yeah, I did watch a little bit yesterday. You know, we all tell stories, and occasionally we'll tell those stories numerous times. I'm, I know I do. Uh, but I think the story of your own personal story for 9-11, you can tell as many times as you want. Definitely, yeah. you know, every year on the anniversary. And you know, I was, this is really the first year, you know, my daughter is 18 now, but this is really the first year that I, I think I've had kind of dove into the dialogue with her. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. You know, and remember her father, her biological father passed away in combat. And I believe he joined because of 9-11. I think that's right. Uh, I could be off, but I think yeah. maybe he was too young. Yeah. Maybe he was too young. I, was he too young or I'm trying to think about the time frame because I know the time frame. I don't think it was e- this, though. E- either, no. either way, you know, that kind of stuff, you know bothers her anytime you talk mm-hmm. war and stuff like that mm-hmm. but i was explaining to her i go you know i was you know i was young I was you know this is 22 years ago so i was 26 years old and i was still at the my first radio station mm-hmm. xl 106.7 in orlando i was producing at the time and i was getting ready to move over to the rock station wjrr mm-hmm. And I remember that morning, so I had an assistant producer, this guy, Jonathan Hyla, also a friend of mine, great guy, and he would run the board. I was always terrified to run the board Mm -hmm. because I'd always screw it up. I was not very good in that way. That morning, he called in sick, which we all knew was bullshit. Oh, God. We knew that he wasn't coming in because he was hungover. (laughs) <laughs> and so I had to act as super producer, but I dug those days because it made me look good. Mm-hmm. So I, there were two different rooms to the morning show, the Doc and Johnny morning show. Doc and Johnny and I believe Grace, the 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 woman on the show at the time, they were in one room and I was in another room and it was really just me. That day I was answering phones, I was running the board, I was doing it all. And mm-hmm. I was you know, contributing and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was doing all great up until, you know, nine o'clock. Yeah. The first, you know, just uh, just yeah. nine o'clock. And so uh, I, I we were in a break. We we're in a music break or something. And I walked over to the room. And when I walked, we had these you know box TVs in the corner. And I walk over and I see this plane hit a tower. Mm-hmm. So in Orlando, like the biggest building, at least at the time, was the SunTrust building, which is not very big. And I was like, oh, my God, I thought that's what the building was. I thought oh, a, a okay. small plane had hit the SunTrust building because the damn TV was so fucking small. Right. right? I couldn't it's, tell what it was. Right. I couldn't <laughs> tell what it was. <laughs> so I was like, uh, I'll go, oh, my God, somebody, a plane hit the SunTrust building. And I believe Johnny was like, no, 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 this is in New York. This is a World Trade Center. And I, I'm so I've always been so angry with myself not to say, oh, my God, this is a terrorist attack. I was mm-hmm. too young. I didn't know. Right. You know, but Doc on the show was, he was a visionary when it came to those types of things. His intuition was really, really good. If you want to know where I got it today, probably was passed on from him. He was a little paranoid, very (laughs) intuitive. A little bit. So, uh, then this, then before, like right before the second plane hits, he goes, this is a terrorist attack. And then the second plane hits. So we go on the air. We stay on the air. Like most radio personalities that day, you stayed on the air Till as long as you could. Mm-hmm. We were, oh, so you didn't switch over shifts. We got rid of all the commercials. This is war room stuff. Yeah. Nowadays in radio, they probably would not do that. Oh, right. Imagine They're, doing it now. Still, we, we got to make sure we get the songs in, guys, and the commercials. <laughs> and, you know, and they wouldn't flip over to the new. It, it's a, just a different day and age. I don't mm-hmm. think they would. They, I don't think they would do it. I Personally, I don't think they'd do it. But that was, you know, the program director comes in and goes, hey, look. Drop all commercials, drop all songs, and we weren't a full blown talk show. Mm-hmm. Drop it all and go wall to wall coverage. Dang. So we're going wall to wall coverage, and I'm now super producer. So not only now am I freaking out because the world's coming to an end, right? <laughs> right. But now you got to keep it together and answer phones and I got to do up it, news stuff and find people to get on the show. Yeah. Dang. 
So I'm not contributing all that much on the air. Right. So I've got one headphone in, phone up to my other ear, and I'm trying to find people. Mm -hmm. And I was actually the first person to start to interview the people in Venice, Florida, where some of the terrorists trained because that's my old stomping ground, you know, growing up in Sarasota, Uh which is just north of Venice. And so the one of the women that housed one of the terrorists, Mm -hmm. I had her on the phone while the CIA, the FBI and National News showed up at her door. She had to cut the conversation short. Dang. Wow. Talk about breaking news. I got a hold of Osama bin Laden's brother who lived in Orlando and I got his number and I called him and was talking to him as the United States federal government was ushering he and his family out to get on a private plane back to Saudi Arabia. He answered the phone? He did, and I talked to him. Wow. I still have the dot matrix spreadsheet of all the businesses that he owned in Orlando. You want to talk about scary? Mm-hmm. That dude had like almost 200 businesses. Dang. Spreading that money around. Yeah. And I still have the paperwork for it. You know, so I called the voicemail of uh, Let's Roll Todd, the hero from the Pennsylvania flight that went Mm -hmm. down, the United flight. Yeah. I saw his family on, it was like, Good Morning America. And I found his, I was really good at doing this. I found his number. I called it. Do you know that he was not supposed to be on that plane that day? A lot of people weren't supposed to be in places and doing things that happened on that day. Right. You listen to those stories, it's wild. I called his voicemail and the, how I got his cell phone because I got his home phone. This is mm-hmm. when you get home phones. And his home phone said, hey, look, I'm going to be in, I think, Boston till this date. And it was a day after. It was like September 12th. So he came back early. And he says, yeah. but if you need me, give me a call on my cell. And that's how you got the number. And that's how I got his number. And then I called it. It was... It, I never could call it back. I called no. it. Why? I don't know why, but I called it. And it was the most disturbing, one of the most disturbing things I've ever done. I've done something disturbing like that before. I, When I worked at an insurance company, after Jennifer Hudson's mother was murdered, I called her phone, too, and listened to the voicemail. How do you have Jennifer Hudson's mom's voicemail? Because she had a policy with us. Oh, so yeah, that, I think that's illegal. Yeah. I mean, it is, but I did it. Oh. It was a long time ago. So it's I can't still allegedly. go to jail for it now. There's no statute right. of limitations I hope not. for privacy. <laughs> wow. I hope not. So when I worked at this one place, yeah, you know, I was curious what like the president left as a voicemail. Mm-hmm. So I call him. <laughs> you know. Now that time it was Bill. You know, I was like, Bill. I only stole ten social security numbers. Yeah. Didn't think it was that big of a deal. Oh. You know? Not at all. Yeah. It was like, you know, I knew Putin was going to be a big deal, so I called him up. I was like, Vlad, it's Nikki. <laughs> Some guy, Big V. Thanks for, by the way, having a policy with us. We appreciate it. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you know, I'm talking to my daughter and I'm telling her my story. Mm-hmm. You know, and I almost get sick of me telling the story because I actually I haven't told the full story in a very long time. And she was actually very interested, which oh, it's always good. surprising. Yeah, as a parent, when your kids are interested in your story. Uh huh. You know, at least you think that they're interested. So, and I did. I really believe that she was interested. But I told her, I said, you know, I, you know, I asked her how how you how you learn about it, how you continuously learn about it. Is their freshman year in college, and you know, they still bring it up and and all those types of things. Um, and uh, and I said, you know, I go bees. You, you'll never know the feeling in your lifetime. Hopefully, you'll never know this feeling of walking outside the house scared like literally scared mm-hmm. of humanity, of the world, and not hearing a plane in the sky. Like, you don't know how many noises. We we got a glimpse of it during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. You know, you still had planes and whatnot, but we got a glimpse of it during the pandemic where you go out on the streets, there's no cars. It felt like we were in an apocalypse. Like, we were, I would be driving to work in the morning and nobody would be on the road with me. Right. It was freaky. Mm-hmm. It was like The Walking Dead, the yes. opening scene of The Walking yes. Dead. Yes. Right? Zombies coming out of here. It, 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 so that's like the closest thing the younger generation has come to having that feeling of mm-hmm. 912. Yes. 913, 914, 915 until we started to get back in the air. Uh, and, 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 and I said to her, I go, there's also a feeling that I hope and I pray to God every night that you will get to experience. Uh, and I hope to experience it with you. And she goes, what's that? And I said, 
for six to nine months after 9-11, the entire country came together. Yep. We did not see skin color. Mm -mm. We did not see religion. We didn't care what side of the aisle you stood on. Mm -hmm. We just cared about the red, white, and blue. That was it. We did not bash our country. We loved our country. The president, whether you were a Democrat or a Republican with differing views, you still stood behind the president and you respected the office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's where we were at so much so that you could not buy American paraphernalia. Nowhere. It was sold out. Right. You couldn't buy flags. You couldn't buy shirts. You couldn't buy... People were actually making stores in malls to sell USA stuff. Mm. And she looks at me and she goes, wow, really? Are you serious? That's one of the only times I can think back in my entire adult life that I went to go buy a flag and I couldn't find one. I never even had a, the notion before, like, I'm going to go buy a flag. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't. I didn't care about buying anything red, white, blue. It didn't come to me. But at that time, I wanted a flag, and I couldn't get one. But she, she was blown away that, that that was real. I was telling her something that she, it was just the look on her face and her response. She, she just was blown. She thought I think she thought I was lying. <laughs> because I mean, it's like a work. Because, yeah, it was a yeah. work because it was, it's so. Are fetched right now. Yeah. So unimaginable mm -hmm. that you could go a day in this country right now and not hear a story of somebody hating someone else to the point where they're going to kill them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because they have a different belief system. Mm -hmm. Or they're mad or they're boycotting something or some craziness we got going on now. Yep, absolutely. Wasn't happening. Well, and to your credit about, like, you don't realize the sounds that you're, like, bombarded by until they're not there anymore mm -hmm. several people where i'm from all got freaked out and thought that there was more attacks that were going to happen to where we were at because air force one came in and it was the only plane in the sky so like people were walking outside of their house the news reported on it they thought that something was coming like why would they come and attack omaha you know but actually that's the first place the midwest is the first place for a nuclear attack. that's where the nukes will go because that's where yeah. strategic air command is right mm -hmm. yeah so everybody in Omaha, Nikki D, got those little orange cone things in their hand, and they were mm -hmm. redirecting Air Force One. <laughs> yeah. Go that there, way. There are thousands of corn huskers <laughs> yes. out in the street telling President Bush at the time, no, mm -mm. go back east. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, get out of here. <laughs> my buddy had, uh, I was telling Baylor this the other day, my buddy had uh, M-16s pulled on him because there's only one corridor on the interstate. Uh, it's 80, right? Mm -hmm. 80 goes down by the Air Force Base and to SAC. And so um, they blocked off all of the on-ramps and his pathway to work took him there because he's just some shithead that cleans cars for a living. He didn't even watch the news. He woke up, got into his car and drove, had no idea that 9-11 had happened. Wow. And he got to the, the on-ramp and the, the military stopped him. Turn it around. He's driving this little shitty escort. Let him, let there, out of here. there are people that like there's a few people that had no idea uh-huh like mm -hmm. i remember that day when we finally got off the air i mean i was just spent we all were spent but i was like i gotta i gotta clear my head so i went to the gym mm -hmm. and the gym was right across the street from the radio station and there you know be some people there was people in the gym that i would see and i you know was friendly with and you know you think everybody was talking about it i'll never forget this one woman uh i had seen and uh i was like can you believe it? I was like, how you know? You'd ask, how you doing? How, is everything okay? Did you know anybody in New York? And she's like, what are you talking about? Dang. And I was like, wow. are you watching any of the eighty televisions above the cardio equipment right now? No, nope. right. You know, it was just nuts. And at that time, was our first time experiencing media overload. Mm -hmm. Social media wasn't much of a thing. Nope. We did not have Facebook. We did not have Twitter. Definitely didn't have Instagram. MySpace was around. Mm -hmm. But that's not how we were ingesting news. Right. It was on a TV. So it was the debut of the ticker. It was the debut of the, you know, quad windows. Yep. It was the debut of the back and forth. It was all these different things mm -hmm. that were deemed headline or breaking news. Right. You and, know? and at the time, I was working in the mall. So I was a front cashier and where my my register was was at the front entrance where people come in and out the store of the mall and i remember i was standing up there and my manager came out and she was just like screaming so we were all like 
what's happening? Is somebody robbing us or something? That's what we thought was happening. And she's like, everybody come to the back. Everybody come to the back. And we're like, "Uh oh, somebody's robbing us. So I just remember going to the back and then she has us gather around this TV and we're seeing the planes hit or whatever. And then uh, there were people in the mall at the time. And then all of a sudden she's like, we're going to have to shut down. We're going to have to leave. We're gonna have to, da, da, da. She's going crazy. So we go back out and I remember all the people that were in the mall before I walked away from my register, it's like everybody left at the same time, mm-hmm. and it was completely silent. Oh. I'm like, this is weird. Mm-hmm. And then I just drove home as fast as I could. like, And in my mind, I'm like looking around like, is some bombs going to come down here? Like, You just don't know what's happening. So I just remember driving home so fast to try to get out of my car because I didn't know what was going to happen. Imagine 19 men shut down the entire country. Yeah. Yeah. You can tell what kind of place Nikki was working at in the mall. Notice that she mentioned... Yeah, I thought somebody was robbing us. <laughs> right, and it was just so blase. <laughs> you know, but no, but no, it was. Why would she be screaming? You know, you know, it was it was something more serious than that. It was just the end of the world. Yeah, I was like, oh, here we go again. The skies are back. <laughs> Let's go back. You know, the only good thing is I get to do my nails while we're sitting in the back room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she hear all like, yeah, no big deal. Well, yeah. I guess we're gonna well, rob again. We've never been robbed before, but that's just the first thing that comes to mind when you're working in a store and somebody's screaming is that somebody's robbing you. I was like, all right, Carol, I'll be back in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Guys are back to rob us. <laughs> <laughs> do oh you, my gosh! Do you think it's in bad taste? You know, again, my whole thing on conspiracy theories is at one time uh, I, I was all in because it was the opposite of what most people thought. Right. And if you brought it up, I mean, radio is part, you know, thought evoking or evoking of anything and emotion evoking. And it would always tweak people the wrong way. Mm-hmm. So you generate phone calls and back and forth. And, you know, that's what we do. But now everybody believes in conspiracy theories. Yep. Right. So every year on 9-11, the 9-11 truthers <laughs> and the conspiracy theorists come out of the woodworks mainly on twitter and, and tiktok and tiktok too yeah. mm-hmm. okay so do you think it's in bad taste for these people with you know whatever it is that they think it is to do it and that goes for any conspiracy theory like i don't know you can believe it whatever you want and you can throw stuff out there and yes some of the stuff is kind of fun to listen to and hear and and i don't doubt that probably some of it is actually true mm-hmm. But these people that do these kinds of conspiracy posts on any anniversary, if there is loss of life and these people have nothing to do with it, the people in the World Trade Center have nothing to do with it, mm-hmm. and you're out there with these conspiracy theories instead of honoring, mm-hmm. celebrating their life. Disrespectful. I think it's extremely disrespectful. It's very disrespectful. Agreed. You have all the other days of the year to post all your crazy conspiracy theories. And if 9-11 is one of your conspiracy theories, post it on any other day except the day that people are honoring people that they lost. People, I mean, even for me, 9-11 is, is not only um, a thought process of the people that we lost on that day, but all the events that followed after that are significant to my life because I joined the military like immediately after uh, September 11th happened. And I went to boot camp uh, January of the following year, like within months I was gone. I was shipped off and my battle group was the first ones that went over to the Iraqi war. So for me, we were a bunch of kids that most of us signed up because of September 11th. And I went over to Iraq with 13 plus thousand uh, Navy personnel and Marines, and we came back with a lot less than that. And these people went and gave their lives for this country. So for me, when I see people do that, that's disrespectful on multiple levels, not only for the people that lost their lives September 11th, but the people that lost their lives after that because we went to defend this country. Yeah. did Was one of your ships one of the ships that was a part of the shock and all that were shooting the... Oh, yes, 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 yes. We were attacked as soon as we got there. My ship was because we carried Marines. I was on an amphibious ship. So it's, our job was to put the Marines on the shore. And that was one of the scariest days of my life. I tell this story often, you know, to my friends and stuff, and they, they kind of laugh at it because I make it a little comical. But we were pulling up. We were putting the Marines on the beach. And uh, 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 LHD is the second largest ship in the Navy. So it's not small. You can't miss it. And as we were offloading Marines, they started shooting mortars at us. Wow. And me being the person that I am, 
I wasn't where I was supposed to be during that time. I was skating, as they call it, in the military. So a bunch of us was in our birthing area, and we were asleep. We weren't supposed to be asleep. So when the alarms went off, they're like, general quarters, general quarters, you know, man your battle stations. Normally at the end of that, they always say, this is a drill because you have to practice for the real thing. But at the end of this message, they were like, this is not a drill. We have missiles inbound. So all of us jump out of our racks and we're running around in circles and we're like, oh, my God, we're, we're like being attacked for real. Like this is not play play no more. This isn't training like we're being attacked. So then the captain's calling out where the missiles are coming, what part of the ship is going to hit and where my station was is what takes on the hits. We have to take the hits on the front of the ship so the back can keep going. So now I have the dilemma am I going to go to my battle station or am I going to go hide? I don't want to die. I'm only 19. Like I'm going to have all these things going through my mind. And finally I go to my battle station, my chief's yelling and screaming cause I'm late and I'm not where I'm supposed to be. And then they tell us to brace for shock. And at that moment I just start crying. And I just remember I'm sliding down this little wall and I'm being dramatic and I'm like, I'm too young to die. Why did I do this? I don't want to be blown up by missiles. And my chief's like, you guys got to get yourselves together. He's like yelling at us. And luckily, we didn't blow up because our ship, we shot off our missiles and we, you know, intercepted it in the air. And I'm alive today. But it's one of the scariest things that I went through in my lifetime, for sure. You know what I'd like to see? What? Nikki jumping out of a wreck. I had to. Mm, yes. <laughs> and I, I, I'm assuming you're talking about your breasts. <laughs> I'm Be- talking about where I slip, my bed. Oh, so your racks were in your rack. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> I was like, God, how did she do that? Very blase about this missile thing, right. too. Right. So no. just, just like the possible robbers at her store. Yeah. Oh, oh. Missiles. <sighs> Stupid missile. <laughs> <laughs> missiles gonna missile. <laughs> She, uh, we're shooting off the boat. She's shooting off. Their people are shooting off the boat, and Nikki's in the front of it like the Titanic, yelling at him. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Stop shooting your missiles at me! <laughs> not, not cussing, but right. You bad sons of guns! <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty scary. Like Lieutenant Dan and Forrest Gump when he's uh-huh. at the top. Of him. Yes, <laughs> bring it on, God! <laughs> you want some of this? <laughs> Also, I was telling my daughter, you know, the events afterwards, like we were so needing to get back to some type of normalcy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the NFL was one of the first sporting events. WWE was one of the first. If you want to hear one of the best renditions of the national anthem live, not record it like Whitney Houston's. Uh, even that woman that did Thursday Night Football mm-hmm. uh, last week, that uh, Grant lady, who I thought did an amazing job. I'm assuming hers was pre-recorded. If it wasn't, that's probably one of the best renditions of the National Anthem I've ever heard. But Lillian Garcia, the former ring announcer for WWE, uh, when WWE aired its first show after 9-11 and all the wrestlers come out, and you've got, you know, this was the heyday. This was rock. This is Stone Cold Steve Austin. Bubba Ray Dudley, my buddy, was there, and he had you know, his stuff on his tape, and he shows it to the cameras. And the emotion. People were crying. Body oh, yeah. Listen to this. What too proudly we hail At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket red flare, right. the bomb bursting in air, gave proof. That our flag was still there. That was a good note. Jesus. Wow. Yeah. That was a good note. Does that star spangle banner yet wait for the land of the free? And the Oh, 
Wow. And just think. The feeling, like, I'm tearing up just listening to that. I'm glad that I don't don't have to feel alone in that. Yeah, I mean, that is such, you you have to put yourself in that. Don't laugh. Don't laugh, missiles. You you got to put yourself, like, that's right after 9-11. It's the 13th of September. 13th of September. They decide to do a live show two days afterwards. She's crying. I'm going to cry. I can't look at the video no more. (laughs) (laughs) I was saying it. eyes are so glassy over there. I was saying it metaphorically speaking. <laughs> no, I'm going to cry. I might be actually crying right, right now. He's crying. Just I look at crying. him. <laughs> you guys shut up. I'm crying His laughing. His face is so red. <laughs> oh, oh you guys shut up because I cry oh, all the time. So, that was, this is the first time I cried in like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Look, I'm really crying. I have tears running down my face. We know you're really crying. That's well, why it's so I'm funny. Crying, I'm crying, love. <laughs> now you got Bailey crying. Now everybody's in here crying. Everybody crying. See what you started, Nelson? <sighs> Nobody doesn't have time for this. I'm trying to get through some a show here, okay? You oh want everybody God. to cry. Uh, I'm crying because you're please. actually crying. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like the worst ever? Like I'm laughing, crying, and somebody sad crying. Oh my god! A lot of crying going on. God almighty! Crying game. Oh my god! That's hilarious. So that was like uh, the big question for entertainment: is when do you go back? When can you? Mm -hmm. Late night television really struggled with that because which, and and so did radio. Mm -hmm. You know, when could you start making jokes? When did you think your audience? When did the country want to laugh again? And it was kind of like an overall consensus of somebody's got to do it. Right. It's not going to be like this forever. How do we get back to laughing at things? Right. It was really difficult. It was really difficult to do radio. It was really difficult to to do conversation off the air. Well, half the late night programs are filmed in New York. Right. It's just the Tonight Show that's in California. Oh, so okay. Conan mm-hmm. is in was in New York at the time. Letterman's in New York. I think even the the late program on on whatever the Tonight Show's on. I can't remember what affiliate it is, but even that late late program I think is filmed in New York. So uh, you know to see shows like WWE and you know uh, football. You know the the Saints game where Green Day and U two perform. Saints come marching mm-hmm. and in the backdrop had uh, all the victims of 9-11 uh, scrolling or was written down. Mm-hmm. Probably one of the best performances, you know. Or no, yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, right, I'm right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not mixing that up with, with uh, Katrina, right? No, 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 no. No. Yeah, they did both. Did they do both? I don't remember the Katrina one. I remember 9-11. I think because Katrina, I think they also... I think they also said maybe it was you two that did it, and 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 Billy Joe Armstrong joined them, but they might have been the same bands that did it for Katrina too, because the Saints went on to win the Super Bowl that year. You want to talk about the NFL being scripted, hmm. right? A little disappointed in the NFL Week One with their it, it, what I saw. Now I could totally be missing it, and I've said this last couple of days on the radio show too. Is I didn't think the tributes were there. They were not there at all. At all. At all. Now, again, I don't watch football, but I did watch TV yesterday specifically to look for that and see if, okay, are we missing it? Are they there? They were not on any channel with the exception of history and discovery. When I look now, if they had, they were on later in the day, I didn't see it. But when I looked, they were not there. And like I said on, on the radio program, it would have been a great opportunity because there was a commercial with Roger Goodell in it, and they talked about how 9-11 is either going to become or has become, which is news to me, the day of giving everybody do a charitable contribution in the name of those that lost their lives during Mm -hmm. 9-11. And to me, that not only includes New York uh, and at the Pentagon Mm -hmm. and and those that are on the flights, but also the men and women that served our country that lost their their lives in battle. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's a really good idea, but why, why is the NFL not doing something for at least the first weekend of the NFL season where you have special cleats, jerseys, hats, shirts, sell them with, uh, you know, proceeds um, going to the families. Right. 
something like that because it was over 3,000 people that lost their lives. You're never going to run out of things to give to when it comes to 9-11. You know, I know where they do stuff for the, they have a military month and all the camo stuff mm-hmm. and that helps out the military. But look, if you're going to, if, if we're going to be this compartmentalized with, you know, this, th- these people get a month and these people get a day and these people get a week and all these other things, why would you not do it for the biggest attack on American soil in our lifetime? It just it doesn't make any sense to me. So I was a little disappointed in that. But other than that, um, you know, that's kind of what I wanted to to bring up. I you know, I get bits and pieces on the radio show, but the nine eleven stuff, I you could go on and on and on about it. Um just because I I think it's important for those of us that lived that day to to have the conversation with our kids and mm-hmm. people that didn't live the day like we did. Right. You know, to, to, to say the things that we just said on this podcast, you know, to to to, to give off the emotion Cause to, there's gonna to come, cry when you hear the national anthem. Right. Like, no, I can't cry again. You know, because there's going to come a day during our lifetime where somebody's going to say, Are, is there anybody still alive who was here during a 9-11 attack? Sure. Right. Like how they do with Pearl Harbor. So yeah. it's like we're going to be that in that us. group of people at some point. Yeah. So the more we continue to share it and talk about it and stuff like that people will know they'll be able to find this <sighs> podcast one day and say oh these people told stories from 9 11 that were there most well, oh. important you okay i'm good now yeah baby man crying yeah well when you started bringing up the, the u2 and all that then i was thinking about that and i was gonna cry so i'm glad you didn't steer too hard into that so if you're trying to pull the music down let's talk about u2 for a second <laughs> <laughs> Make you cry. Well, because just a tribute, and you started talking about. No, I'm not gonna do it. Started talking about the names. Oh, goodness. With or without you. <laughs> no, don't you dare. With or without you. Don't you dare. I'm fine, baby. I'm fine. Sunday, bloody Sunday. No, no. I wish I had lyrics for other YouTube songs. Right. I wish I had a YouTube right. song right now. I could join in and sing. All right. Uh, please, if you don't already, uh, if you're in the, obviously, Sacramento area, listen Monday through Friday, 6A to 10A Pacific time on 98 Rock. Uh, you can stream us if you're not in the area. If you get the Odyssey app or the thebaileyshow.com and always get the podcast for the radio show, the same place you're getting the BS Uncensored. We appreciate the support. Oh, by the way, if I could ask a favor, and I'll also post this on social media too. If you got, because, you know, the podcast is numerous places. If you could go to the Apple podcast version and give us a good rating, because mm. there's a couple douchebags on there that went there and just trashed me. And so it brings the rating down. And it's right. like, because this is a newer podcast, mm-hmm. there's it's only really like, affected. It's, yeah, there's only like a couple things there. Mm-hmm. So if you guys, you two percenters, please. You know, hook it up. And for those that don't know what it means to be a two percenter, that's somebody that supports the program. And we have a private Facebook group. So just search the BS Two Peers on Facebook, and you'll be asked to join. And uh, I'll approve you. You can bada get boom, in. Bada boom, bada bam. Yeah. All right, uh, Nikki D. What you got? Never forget. There you go, Nelson. USA. USA. Oh, USA. Can you? Oh leave? my gosh. There he goes. <laughs> All right, for everybody, thanks for uh, supporting the BS Uncensored podcast, FBI Fridays, and also the radio show. Until next week, have a good one. We'll talk then. And bye. Get off my lawn. It's old man Kevin, and the BS is done for right now. Please share, like, and support. TheBaileyShow.com. Now, get out of here.